Hi guys. Uh, this time we're going to be learning how to uh, make a, la a watercolor landscape. So this is just the per first part of it where we're going to draw. And uh, here's some notes for you. Watercolor landscape. Um, when we do this project, I want you to go online and find and use, if not one photo source, if, uh, but maybe several photo sources. Let me just remind you that you don't need to use everything in each photo, but you should use elements of it, and you can even change the colors from the photos, right? Uh, you know how to use Photoshop in my class. You can use it to alter a, a landscape and then uh, copy the shapes from those photos. That's the big thing about my class is I really want you to learn how to draw from real life and sometimes photos are the best things we can uh, get. You know, like for example, you're not gonna make it to the ocean anytime soon to do a landscape at the ocean, so we'll use a photo. Um, we're gonna begin with a drawing. So number two here is I want you to make a really light uh, drawing before you do a watercolor. Um, so draw light lines before painting. Now, um, why do we use light lines? So you know what you're painting, but also we don't want those lines to show up in the painting too much. Um, so we'll do it really lightly. You might be able to erase some lines when the paint's dry, but we don't want to ruin the paint. Um, and uh, we're going to be doing what's called a, um, a perspective drawing. So make a perspective drawing. And this is going to be um, a linear perspective drawing, which means it's all going to work out with a vanish, vanishing point. So, so we're going to say by using a vanishing point. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Um, okay, so when we're going to start a, a drawing, I'll come back to this in a minute, when we start a drawing you need to begin with a horizon where the sky meets the earth. You know, um, that could be anywhere on the paper. If you're looking at your photo you're gonna have to decide where does the sky meet the earth? And you might have mountains or trees in the way, but we have to decide kind of where that is. A lot of times photographers will just put it right in the middle of their picture. And so that's one way of thinking of it. But this line, even though it's the sky meeting the earth, it's also uh, imaginary in one respect because you won't see a line in nature. You don't see lines where the vanishing or where the uh, horizon is necessarily, but you need to know it's there because it's not only where the sky meets the earth, it's your eye level. If you're standing up, it might be in the middle of this view. If you're sitting down, it might be down here. You see more sky above you than earth below you. If you're up on a mountain, you're looking way down on a big valley, you're gonna see lots of land down here, but very little sky up there. So this can move up and down depending on how high or how low the photographer was or how high or low you are in this scene. We're going to just kind of stick with the middle for now. And um, we need to do one more thing on this eye level or horizon line. I want you to be standing somewhere and getting a view from that position. So I'm just gonna randomly say I'm standing over here on the right where that X is and I want this X to function as a vanishing point. Okay, so we're just gonna do a simple scene. Maybe you can find a scene or a picture with a road in it. And so maybe, a, and I'm just being hypothetical here, your road might look different than mine, but it might start over here by me and go out to the horizon I'm going to move my finishing point over because my line just missed it. And it's going to that mark there. I could, you could use a ruler for this. Um, I'm just going to eyeball it and get it approximate. Now I can um, draw the other side of the road, but it also has to go to that vanishing point. And we know, and you know, 
that by just by experience that things will disappear on the horizon. We won't see any details back there. They get so small. And so now this is where I want to teach you that this vanishing point, all things in this drawing is a single point perspective are going to go back towards that vanishing point. So um, in our notes, I would like to tell you number four that uh, you are going to have lots of um, diminishing things. What does diminishing mean? What does diminish mean? It means it slowly fades out or it disappears or it, uh, it, it fades. And so there's different ways that your picture, you know, this drawing and your painting, things should fade in the distance. And, and those things are all the sizes of things and all the shapes should diminish. Uh, your details should diminish in the background. Um, things up close will be the opposite. The side, they'll be big and, and uh, the shapes will be larger and the details will be more obvious. Um, and uh, your shading will be have more contrast. So contrast is the other one. Contrast means I can see the difference between, nothing's blurry. I can see the difference between hard edge shapes and light and dark shapes. Um, okay, so the last thing we're going to make sure and use, well not the last thing, but uh, the next thing is that we need to have some overlapping. You need to have lots of overlapping and we're going to talk a lot about that as I, as I draw. And number six, um, I'd really like you to um, think about um, well, I think, I think we'll come back to that. Let's draw. So on your paper here, I, this might be a road. You could also turn it into a, um, a railroad tracks. Now, if this line is going sideways and this is going out to the vanishing point, um, railroad tracks would actually go 90 degrees to the paper to the edge of the paper. So they need to stay as horizontal as parallel with that. But let's say we have a bunch of railroad ties in these, and it's a train track. Now this distance here, it would need to get smaller as it gets to the next one. And it gets even um, narrower as it goes to the next one and so forth until they get so close together and light that you won't see them anymore. They'll, they're gonna fade off in the distance. Um, I'm going to actually begin um, with the mountains back here. Now, where are the mountains? Um, if they're back way in the background, are they above the, the horizon line? Are they above your eye level and this vanishing point? Can you have a mountain above a vanishing point? Well, sure you can. Um, they might not be huge. Um, you know, I might have a mountain range back there that's really, actually these are really big mountains, but um, maybe they just look small because they're so far away. Out here in the, in the Utah deserts, we, we often see a scene like this. We don't always see this horizon though. Now, can you have mountains in front of these mountains overlapping? And maybe these mount, yeah, you can. Maybe these mountains are even just foothills and they're smaller, um, but they're going to appear like they're taller or bigger because they're closer to you. So now I'm gonna do some erasing here. And they appear to be bigger just because they're closer. So now I've got some overlapping mountains. Remember that's one of our objectives is to do some overlapping. Um, but I also want some telephone poles in here. So I'm going to make a pole, um, a telephone pole just here. And we know that telephone poles are over our eye level. However high you need to decide Here's a telephone pole. And um, I don't want you to just make a straight line at the top and the bottom because that's not what happens in nature. Oh, look, I'm gonna erase some here stuff here. Um, I'm making this quite dark. Your drawing's gonna be light, right? Because you're gonna watercolor it, but I need to do it dark so you can see it on the camera. Um, the top of this pole, if it's above your eye level, we're gonna round it up. 
and if it's below your eye level, the bottom, we're going to round it down. That's a handy trick for your future drawings, something that will make you a better uh, artist immediately. Now, um, you know, telephone poles are often in a line, and I'm going to follow the line of this road. So I know the bottom of all the poles are going to be really close to this, uh, uh, the road or the railroad tracks. Now, but I don't know how high to make the next pole. I could just go ahead and draw something, and, and I don't want you to really guess, but look at the thickness of this pole. I know where the bottom goes. The thickness of this pole is um, less thick than that, right? It's thinner. Um, because the farther we get away, things need to get thinner and thinner. They also, you know, your sizes of things, your shapes of things need to get smaller, your details get less, your contrast is less. Um, now, how do I know how tall to make this? Well, I can take a ruler from here, and I'm just going to approximate this down to the vanishing point, and I'm going to say right where that line was, I can chop off the pole, and that's going to be useful for the other poles we make because now they're all going to look like they're in perspective. Now the next pole needs to be slightly closer to this one than these two. So if I take this distance and I measure it, I'm going to say, well, I can't go out that far. I'm just going to move it in uh, a little bit. And you notice that I made it thinner. And I'm curving the top and the bottom. And again, you can erase as you go. And I need another pole. So again, uh, this is repetition now. Thinner, closer together, and less detail. So uh, I can keep doing this, but eventually I'm gonna I'm not gonna be able to get my lines very close together. Um, and if you're gonna watercolor this you're going to eventually have to paint these, right? So you need to be thinking, is that just going to be a line in the future? These are getting closer together. So this one, maybe I just make it a thicker line. You're going to have a hard time painting really thin lines. That doesn't look closer. I'm going to do that again. That one's closer. Um, but they're fading now. So we're just going to do really light ones and these tend to just vanish in the distance all right so i've got some telephone poles maybe i put a cross bar because there's two telephone lines on this and um it's just one way to think about your vanishing point now mr kimball you're going to ask why don't i take this cross member that holds the telephone lines why don't I take it down to the vanishing point? Well, it would look funny. If I took it like this, it would look a little funny. So we're going to go 90 degrees to the edge of the paper, and all of these are going to need that. And they're going to get smaller, thinner, closer together as we go back. Maybe this isn't perfect, but you're gonna, I can help you with this in class too. We can just keep doing our best and pretty soon these are just going to turn into little lines and we lose detail. Now I, I did make this look three-dimensional. This would go to the vanishing point, this corner, and this corner would go to point to the vanishing point and so would this one. These start pointing to the vanishing point and then you just chop them off. I might see a little detail on this one, similar thing, but um, I won't, I'll lose that detail pretty soon. It's just going to be a shadow here pretty soon. Um, and I might have, you know, let's do like um, a, a wire on each of these. And so this is a little holder for those wires. So maybe behind here I can imagine this wire coming up, connecting to that thing, doing the same thing here, coming up, connecting, and they're all just going to slowly drape all the way back. Actually, and that wire is going to get so thin we can't see it anyway. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Maybe I've got a little um, ceramic uh, insulator on there so that it goes over. Same here. Maybe it ducks behind and up. Ducks behind and up. You have to think about space as you do these things. 
Um, I'm not expecting you to, uh, I might, might be making it look easy, but uh, you are just going to try your best. You want to find a picture of the road or something, a fence, fence post, these would be, those would be easy. They might be shorter, so you're going to see the top of the fence post, and you're going to make an ellipse at the top and you're going to make, still going to make a ledger line up to the vanishing point and you can see the top of all these fence posts, right? If I erase those, you'll see that these look like fence posts now. Um, I'll hang on to my telephone poles for our painting lesson. Um, this is just our drawing and uh, our preliminary drawing on watercolor paper before we do that. Okay, so you have lots of things like that, but you might have a tree over here and a tree close up, we know that that tree is taller than us and taller than our eye level, just like these telephone poles. Those are from trees anyway. So trees are gonna be really tall, so we might have a tree here. And um, you should probably you know, practice looking at trees to come up with some, some cool looking trees. I, don't, I actually don't love when students make broccoli instead of trees. Um, and, and students, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I'm gonna give this some major branches here. This is fairly close up. And in, in, in a painting like this, I don't actually wanna draw every leaf. Well, that, that would be a waste of time. I'm just gonna lightly um, draw the contours. I can see the shapes of the leaves are coming up and this might go off my page. And um, I've got leaves and they're never perfectly symmetrical, hardly ever. I mean, pine trees can be but even pine trees, I don't like to see this kind of stuff. These are just symbols for trees and we're moving beyond that. Now we're trying to draw the illusion of reality and this is going to challenge you. So I've got, anyway, I've got some here, some, maybe I've got some light showing through the branches and these are very organic shapes. You know, we're not gonna see triangles and squares in nature a lot. We're gonna mostly see organic things, things that aren't predictable and things that change. So I've got some sky showing through there. Uh, this will be important when we paint the skies to know where that sky shows through and how we're going to paint this. Now, let me go back to this idea. I often see beginners just wanting to make a bunch of trees. Now, the problem with these trees is I don't want a um, little powder puff. Uh, they look like clouds on a stick and I don't want them all separate. Part of the problem is they're not overlapping anything. They're all independent. Part of the problem is they're not getting bigger to smaller. Um, even if you took and you did some triangles for pine trees and overlapped them, that's still that's overlapping, but they don't look like real trees. And we've got to do diminishing sizes and diminishing um, details and so forth. So I'm gonna kind of erase those and get rid of them. Um, you'll see those, I'll have to, you know, you just can't erase some things. Uh, they'll show up in my watercolor, but I'm not, this is just a demo, so I'm not worried. Um, you know, I might have another tree back here. Way back here. And now I'm losing some of the mountains and that's okay, it's overlapping. And, um, you know, it's, it's that weird shape tree. They're not perfect, they don't, um, they have kind of that organic shape. And so it's right over my vanishing point and that's okay. And so this is the idea behind your drawings. You wanna make things diminish. You want them to lose detail and um, smaller shapes. And then um, by the time you're done, you're ready to paint. And, and you'll see that in my next watercolor video. Um, you can erase the horizon line if you want.